use a Mac? Yes, I did use a Mac. I'm sorry. That was. I, I, I have noticed, however, that certain programs run via WebEx uh, from Cisco. It's a very Windows based programming and uh, there's some options that don't show up. So I usually use other things whenever I do it. Or I use this computer, which happens to be a PC and a very amazing PC at that. Well, maybe when we uh, go to Zoom, it'll be better. Zoom speaks both languages pretty well. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Paula McCain. I'm a recovery business advisor for the North Central Texas Small Business Development Center. Today is National Quiche Lorraine Day. It's good for brunch and lunch. The SBDC is a leading provider of assistance for small businesses. We are grant funded and because of that, we can, uh, we can provide resources to you, such as this webinar at no cost. Today's topic is called the success mindset that will grow your business and is being presented by Jamie Ellathorpe. Jamie, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So welcome to today's presentation. Before we get started, I just wanted to give everyone a brief overview of some of the key points that we are going to talk about in today's presentation. So the first thing that we are going to talk about is that your mindset determines your success at attaining your goals and building the business that you'd really like to have. The second thing that we're going to go over today is I'm going to teach you a three prong approach to creating an exciting and effortless plan to grow your business, to get more clients, generate consistent cash flow. And I'm also going to share why mindset is really the underpin to making all of these things successful in your business. I'll share a little bit about myself and how I help heart-centered entrepreneurs and business professionals attract more clients into their business. And then at the end of today's presentation, we'll have plenty of time for question and answer, and you can ask questions and we can open up the presentation to do some networking. I've heard we've got some fabulous people that join these calls, so you never know who you're going to meet. So make sure that you stay until the end. So I will share even more free resources on how you can grow your business and what's available to you outside of this presentation. So let's get started. I'm going to share my screen here. So, so this is me. 
I am a business growth consultant with 540 Strategies. That's the name of my company. And here's just a little overview again of the benefits. Jamie, that, yeah. Jamie, is, I, is it not showing? No, we don't see your screen. Oh, okay. Let me let me hit escape here. I thought we had that set up here. Um, is it on? I guess it's here that I need to share. Uh, share. Let's everything. try this again. I'm sorry. Maybe we lost connection. I thought we already had this. Um, there you are. Up here. There we go. Okay. So let me get to the slide. So that, that's me and who I am. Okay. So here again is just some of the benefits of what we're going to talk about today. So I really want to start here. So I'm going to start with who am I before I get into this next slide here, but I just wanted to share a little bit of a background with you on, on what I do. So I help heart-centered entrepreneurs and business professionals attract more clients so that they can grow their businesses and get off the cash flow roller coaster. So you might be asking, well, what exactly does that mean? Well, one of the biggest challenges that I see business owners face is having a steady stream of prospects in their business that convert to paying clients. So what I do is I teach heart-centered entrepreneurs and business professionals a three-prong approach or system to draw in more clients and create a stable cash flow into their business. So the three parts are is I help my clients create a marketing plan so they know exactly what to do each day to grow their business. The second part and what we're gonna focus on today is I help them build a strong mindset so that Jay, they can eliminate the... Are you advancing your slides? Not yet, not yet. Okay, good. Okay, my bad. That's okay, <laughs> that's all right, that's all right. So back to the mindset piece, the reason that I help them do this is so that they can eliminate the doubt, the fear, the worry and the stress that's stopping them from meeting their goals. And finally, we're gonna talk about this a little bit today too, is I help them learn how to manifest. And that's just a fancy word for using the power of intention to speed up the entire process of growing your business and getting what you want. So I've helped mom and pop businesses all the way up to the number six on the Fortune 500 market their products and services over the last 20 years. And I started working directly with small business owners about four years ago. So just a little bit more about my background before we get started. So I have degrees in journalism and communication with experience in writing for print, graphic design, radio, and television. I have several certifications in mindset training, and I am a certified law of attraction coach with the Quantum Success Coaching Academy. And I got started on my own personal development journey, so that's kind of how I got here. And that eventually led me to starting this business about five years ago. And it's my passion and it's my life's work to share with you all of the things that I have learned over the years to grow businesses. And lastly, just a little bit more about me, I am the creator of the Client Attractor Blueprint. It's a six-step system to help you build your brand and marketing from the ground up. And I am working on my online mindset course right now. I'm almost finished called Project Happiness, so that should be out soon. And finally, I have recently become an international best-selling author, and I have another book along the way. So just a little bit about me and my background. So... Again, what we're going to talk about today is how you show up mentally, emotionally, and energetically to your business. And this is what I call the marketing behind the marketing. And the reason that I say this is that the proper mindset is what makes all of the outside stuff in your business work, whether that's the marketing or just the basic doing in your business. So that's why I want to talk to you so much about that today. So I'm going to teach you a three prong approach to create an exciting and effortless plan to grow your business, get more clients, generate some cash flow. And we're going to talk about why that mindset again is the underpin of making all of that possible. So I'm going to share as much as I can with you today in the hour to hour and a half that we have together. But of course, it's impossible for me to share everything 
that I know. So there's going to be some opportunities at the end of this presentation for some more resources for you to continue to grow your business outside of what we're going to talk about today. And I will share that in just a minute. So bringing us up to our current slide. So this is a quote from one of my mindset mentors, and it's just always stuck with me. And he always used to say that your mindset determines your success or failure in your life and in your business. So take just a moment and let that sink in. That your mindset is what determines your success. A lot of people don't really think about that. So before we move on, I want you to take just a few minutes and grab a piece of paper or notebook. And I want you to write down a few ideas of what success means to you. What does success mean to you as a business owner or a business professional? And what does that mean for your business? And after you take just a couple of moments to reflect on that, think about what does success really mean in your life? You know, one of the philosophies that I'm really passionate about is I feel like our business success is really just a gateway to us living our best life. So what does success mean for you in your life? And as you're thinking about that, here's some questions to kind of further ponder. So would you like to easily attract more clients and customers? What about effortlessly selling your products and services? Would you like to stabilize cash flow possibly in your business while you simultaneously grow it? What do those things look like? Just take a moment and write those ideas down. And as you're doing that, I want you to imagine what would it be like to have all the clients and customers that you want? Imagine what it would be like to have your products and your services just selling themselves. Imagine what that would be like. And finally, imagine what it would be like to just have stable income coming into your business each and every month. Write down those things now. Imagine what that would be like. Now, what would your life look like if you had your ideal business up and running? What if everything that you wanted in your business was happening right now? Would you have more time to spend with family and friends? Would you like to take some more vacations? Or maybe you'd like to buy your dream house. I hear a lot of entrepreneurs say that. Or maybe you'd like to buy something special for your family. Or better yet, maybe you'd just like to have some more time for yourself. We are able to do all the things that you want to do when you want to do them. So write those things down. And as you're writing down, most importantly, how do you feel? How do those things make you feel? So I'll give you just a second to imagine. So I asked you those questions because those are the things that I hear a lot of entrepreneurs and business professionals say that they want. So many of them want this. But why do so many of them struggle to actually have it happen and to do it? 
Well, it's because most entrepreneurs and business professionals start to grow their business with the outside approach, like sales or marketing. They start on the tactical pieces of trying to grow their business. And I will tell you that marketing and sales in and of themselves can actually be a problem. I work with a lot of people on that piece. So, you know, most, most entrepreneurs do struggle with that, but what's really going on if we take a deeper dive is that the lack of results that they're getting with that sales and marketing is really the inside job. And it all starts with your mindset. So that's why it's so important to work on your mindset simultaneously while you're growing your business. So from a business growth perspective, here are some of the external problems that I hear a lot of entrepreneurs struggle with. So they lack good marketing and messaging with their collaterals, their websites, their copywriting, and their content. They need systems for customer service and retention. Some of them don't have a business growth plan. Maybe they're missing systems to attract clients and sales into their business. And some of them just need systems for the overall operations and the day-to-day -day running of the business. And finally, a lot of them struggle, I find, to package up their products and services to actually make more money and bring more revenue into the business. So as you can see, there's a lot of moving pieces on the outside of growing a business. So if you're just dealing with one of those problems right now, just one of those problems, can you see how your mindset could trip you up when you just think about one of these problems? So we're gonna jump into a little exercise because I'm all about you walking away today with something that can be put into your business right away that you can start moving forward. So this first exercise, I want you to just take a minute and I want you to write down one problem that you're having in your business right now. So if you could just pick one problem, go ahead and write that down. And as you're writing that down, I want you to think about the thoughts that you've been having about this problem. So just write down two or three thoughts that just seem to be lingering in your mind when you think about this problem. So when you think about those thoughts, do you get stressed? Are you worried? Maybe you're frustrated. I know a lot of business owners who get really frustrated when they have problems in their business. So just take a moment and write down whatever's coming up. And once you're finished with that, I want you to think about what you'd like to see happen in your business. So what would the situation look like if the problem was just completely resolved? What would that look like? So go ahead and write down the ideal outcome that you would like to see. Okay, so now that you're clear about the problem that you've been focusing on and you're clear about what you'd like to see happen, I want you to go back and look at the thoughts that you've been having about this problem. Just take a moment to reflect on those thoughts or maybe those feelings. And as you're looking at that, can you now see why these thoughts have clouded or maybe even contradicted you finding the solution to the problem and getting that ideal outcome. Can you see that conflict now? So this is exactly what I'm talking about when I say that your mindset determines your success or your failure in your business. 
So now that we've kind of covered that and you've got some clarity around the problem in your business, how you're feeling about it and what you'd like to see, I wanna simplify things for you just a little bit. So I've put together a little formula here that I personally believe is the fastest way to grow your business and have success. And here it is. So I've titled it the business growth success formula. And here it is. So here are the three key pieces to having success in your business. So we've talked a little bit about the outside tactical, which is the marketing. And today we're gonna to talk about mindset. And we're also gonna talk a little bit about manifestation. But when we put those three things together, those are the things that I see make businesses grow the fastest and get entrepreneurs and business professionals the success that they want the quickest. So that's why I'm so passionate about the mindset. Now, the reason for that is I can't tell you how many times I've sat down with a business owner and we've put together the most beautiful marketing strategy, the most perfect plan for them to grow their business. And while that's exciting, they shoot themselves in the foot. Now, from an outside perspective, you know, that's what they need to grow their business. They need the plan. But on the inside, if they've got what I call inner stuff that's holding them back, the marketing strategy and the business growth plan, they just, they sit on the desk. And as you know, ideas are just that if they're not implemented. So they're just sitting there on the desk and we certainly don't want that in our business. So let's dive a little deeper into all this stuff. So, what am I talking about when I talk about mindset? I know that that's a word that's getting to be a little bit more popular in our culture. And I think we're seeing a lot more of that in business. But for me, mindset is really the quality of your thoughts and whether they're lining up with your goals and your desires. So again, I've said this enough already, but many entrepreneurs shoot themselves in the foot and it's because they doubt, they fear, they worry, they stress and they just feel overwhelmed that they can't really have what they want in their business. So when you're in those states of thinking, you're really holding off or pushing yourself away from what it is that you really want. And the worst part about this is most people don't even realize that they're doing it. It's this subconscious thing that they're not really even aware of. But when you're afraid, if you're worried or doubtful, a lot of people will even procrastinate and that's just, you know, take not taking the action steps that they need to take. But the problem is, is that's never going to get you to where you want to be. That's what's holding you back. So I'm going to give you some real life examples of what some of this stuff looks like so you can better see it in your business. So um, I'm going to go ahead and go forward here. So the first thing that I wanted to share with you um, this is a client story of mine. This is a business card story. So I had a client that came to me and she had a stack of business cards that she had been collecting on her desk. She had been going to all these networking groups and connecting with all these great people. And so she had this huge stack that had just been piling up over months of time. And she really hadn't done anything with those business cards. So after we had some discussion, she admitted to me that she really didn't know what to do with them. So she was a little afraid to call them because she really wasn't sure how to start that next conversation with them and get it going. And she also didn't know what to say to get them to take the next step and have an actual appointment with her so she could talk about her products to potential prospects. So. We worked together, we created an entire little system. We set it up to where she had some scripts and she knew exactly what to say when she called people and she felt really, really good and she was really excited by the end of our session. And before we closed out that session, we put a little goal together of how many prospects that she wanted to reach out to over the next week until our next session. So we were really excited, had lots of clarity. Week goes by. She comes back to the next session and she hadn't made any progress. 
And like most clients, when we started talking about it, she really didn't have a logical reason. It wasn't that she was too busy. It wasn't that she got distracted with another project or something happened in her schedule. There really was no logical reason for this happening. And she just really didn't know why. So I did some digging with her. And what we discovered is that she was actually afraid to make a sale. She was so afraid that somebody was going to say yes on these calls that it scared her to death. And so she was pushing them away by not taking the action to get them to the point of where they would say yes to do business with her. So we worked together. We removed the fear. We shifted her mindset to feel really, really good about making offers and after we worked through that mindset piece, she was able to take those tactical aspects that we had put together with the marketing and the sales strategy, and she was able to successfully work them into her business and start closing some sales. So let's take a little moment and go to exercise two, and let's talk about this for you. So. Can you start to see where this mindset stuff is going to determine whether the strategy that you're using in your business and all that physical effort that you're taking, whether it's actually going to pay off and whether it's going to work for you. So let's take a minute and I want you to go ahead and write down an example of a time when you had the knowledge or you had everything in front of you that you needed to do something in your business, but it still didn't work. So think about a time when you had all the tools or the strategy there in front of you and for whatever reason, it just didn't work. Okay, after you've got that down, I want you to look back at that time and just ask yourself, why didn't it work? You know, what were you thinking when you tried to make this work? What were the thoughts that you were having? And then as you're thinking about those thoughts, take it to the next level and go back and remember how you felt. How did you feel when you were trying to implement this strategy or this tactic in your business? Now, I want you to think about this for a minute. If you would have had a better feeling thought about that situation back then, could you have had a different outcome? What would have been different? And if you would have had a different thought or felt better, about that process back then, do you think that that strategy or that tactic could have worked for you and your business? Could that have worked? Think about that for just a second and write those answers down. And finally, if you could go back in time and have a do-over, don't we all wish that? But if you could have a do-over, what thoughts could you think to give you a different outcome? So if you could go back in time, what are some different thoughts that you could think that would have given you a different outcome? Okay, so I'm asking you a lot of questions today, but the reason that I'm doing this is that most people don't take the time to ask themselves these questions and sit with themselves and give honest answers. And these are the gold nuggets that are available to you right now. And this is going to give you the path to your success going forward. So. Before we move on, I want you to give yourself a huge pat on the back because you're doing a lot of work right now just in answering some questions. And so this is going to really start to shift things for you. 
So I want to take it one step farther. So we've talked a lot about mindset today. So a lot of people ask me, what is manifestation? You know, it kind of comes across as this magical thing that we just really can't wrap our heads around. So I really just wanted to bring some clarity on that. So really manifestation is just a really fancy word for intention. And when you're intentional, you are focused and you are directing all of your thoughts and feeling really, really good towards what it is that you want. So that is really all it is, is just focus and being very intentional on what you're allowing yourself to think and feel as you think about where you want to go. So I want to stop for just a second and talk about good feeling. Notice I always say good feeling. I'm not going to be able to go into this too deep today, but I do want to bring up that your feelings are actually the gauge to where your thoughts are and how they're lining up to what it is you want. So if you want to speed up the process of achieving your goals and your success in your business, you really want to feel good when you're thinking about what it is that you desire. So just to think about this for just a minute, I'm going to give you an example. I want you to think about having 10 new clients or customers in your business. Think about 10 clients or customers new that are coming into your business. But as you're thinking that, for example, maybe the thought, just like my client here a few minutes ago, maybe the thought of picking up that phone just scares you or just the phone seems like it's heavy and you just don't feel good about picking up that phone, but you know that it's gonna stop you from hitting that client goal. So here's the secret. It's a matter of just reframing your thoughts to feel good, and you will quickly and easily float to your goal of having those 10 new clients. So I wanna give you another example of what I mean by this. And this is what I call the empty calendar story. So just here's a little thing about intention before we move on. So this is another client story that I'd like to share with you kind of about the power of intention. So I had a client that came to me and she kept getting really, really nervous when her booking calendar would get empty. So she was really sporadic. Sometimes she'd have customers or clients in her calendar and then she'd have days or even some weeks where things were thinning out and she was just really really scared of that cash flow up and down that she was feeling in her business so after we talked about it my client realized that she'd actually been keeping her focus on the empty slots in her calendar so just a little bit about manifesting and the power of intention you get what you focus on. So since she was focusing on those empty slots in her calendar, that's what she was getting back in her business. So we did some work and we shifted her paradigm and we imagined that those slots were filling and she just started to see these empty slots filling up in her mind. And she also focused on staying in a really good feeling place while she was doing these little visualization exercises. And what started to happen was her calendar started to fill up and it started to fill up consistently. And as a matter of fact, we were just talking about this a week or so ago, and she has gotten so busy that she is booked out weeks in advance now. She's never had that happen in her business. So she's really, really excited. And all she did was shift the focus of where she was looking on the calendar and seeing the abundance in the calendar and not the lack of clients and customers coming in. So that's just another example of really you creating your reality subconsciously by what it is that you focused on. And basically all she did in that process is she just fed her mind pictures of, of the calendar being full. She just saw all of those names on the calendar. And if she had a slot that was empty, she just imagined that that slot was going to take care of itself, that the phone would ring or a customer or client would show up at the last minute to fill that space. And that's how she did it. So can you see how powerful this stuff is? 
And I want you to imagine just these little shifts in your business. And just imagine what these little shifts could do for you. So I want to bring up something else before we move on. If you've noticed me saying imagine a lot in this presentation, I'm actually doing some work with your mindset right now, because when you tell your mind to imagine, it automatically goes to whatever you're focusing on. So right now, if you're like my other client and you'd like to fill up your calendar, if you would imagine that, tell your mind to imagine it, your mind cannot help but actually see pictures of it happening. So we're doing a lot of work here, just going through the presentation. And Paula, if you have any questions coming up throughout the presentation, please feel free to interject. I'm going to go on to another exercise I want to share with you today, and this is exercise three. I want you to think about something that's been bothering you in your business. So just like that last example, maybe your calendar is not as full as you'd like it to be, or maybe you're not seeing enough cash flow in your business. Or maybe you've had some clients that just didn't renew with you when their contract or their time was up with you. Just whatever it is, write that down. And after you've written that down, I want you to close your eyes. And I want you to picture that situation in your mind. Now, if you don't see anything, that's just fine. Just continue to imagine or sense whatever's coming up for you and that this is happening in your mind. Now, now I want you to imagine what it would be like to have this situation turn completely around and you start having the result that you desire. Imagine that result happening. So if your calendar is empty, imagine seeing those open slots filling up. If you're short on cash, imagine money flooding through the front door of your business. Or just see your bank account filling up, whatever comes to you. And if you'd like more clients to work with you longer, imagine shaking hands with them and just imagine how happy they are that you're helping them continue on whatever journey it is that you're helping them with. So just keep your eyes closed and just allow whatever your imagination comes up with to be played out in your mind. And as this happens, I want you to bring in your five senses to just really amp up this scene. What do you see? Just notice all the colors in this scene and just make them as bright as possible. And again, if you're not seeing anything, just imagine it's happening. Just trust it's happening in your mind. Your mind's doing all this fabulous work for you. Next, what do you hear? Notice in this scene any of the sounds that are around you. Now notice what you smell. Just take a moment and notice what you smell. What can you feel? Maybe you're sitting in a chair, for example. Feel the wood beneath your seat. And finally, what do you taste? Maybe you're not eating, but maybe you're at the beach in this scene. Taste the saltiness in the air. Just notice everything that's around you. Just feel what it would feel like to have this experience. And just tune into the feelings and how good it feels. So if your mind is starting to wander or you're starting to doubt that this could happen, just take in a nice deep breath just relax and just tell your mind, we're just playing. We're just having some fun today. Maybe this is over your lunch hour. We're just having some fun. 
and tell your mind that there's no harm in just playing. I'm going to give you just a couple more seconds to just fully experience this moment. And whenever you're ready, just come back to the presentation, back to the present, present moment, and just notice how you feel. How was that? How was that to go and live in your mind exactly what it is that you want? I would assume most of you are feeling pretty good right now. And again, this is the stuff that shifts your business. And these are the things very, very few people spend time doing. But this is the stuff that speeds up the success. So I encourage you, even after our time together today, to use some of this stuff that you've learned. Do this stuff on your own. If nothing else, you're going to feel really, really good at the end of your vis visualization time. And speaking of feeling good, the next piece to this is inspiration. So when you're doing these types of exercises and this stuff starts working in the ethers or behind the scenes, however you want to say that, and working for you in your business, you're going to start seeing some shifts within yourself and you're going to start noticing that your thoughts shift and that you're going to start seeing the results. But what you're going to do is you're going to go from dreading things to do to inspired to do things. So that's why I put this little boy on this slide. That's how you're going to start feeling in your business that you can be or do or have anything you want and anything is possible. And I felt like that's how he felt in this picture. So you're also going to not only feel like him, but you're going to go into the state of what we call flow. And what I mean by that is that's when the phone just starts ringing in your business. That's when clients start saying yes. And that's when you finally get off the cash flow roller coaster. You start growing your business and everything just feels like it's clicking into place. You start seeing the outward results and you start reaching your goals and it starts to feel pretty effortless. And it just, it feels like everything's just kind of starting to happen without you doing a whole lot for that to happen. So. Before we want to move on here, though, I just want to bring up a little side note. I want you to notice the difference in inspiration versus motivation. I hear so many business owners say that they need to be motivated to do this or they should do that. Or maybe after I do this, I'll feel more motivated. Think about how motivation feels. It kind of has that little like yuck feeling to it, kind of like. I'm motivated to go to the gym, right? Like you kind of feel like you should do it, but there's kind of like that, uh, that's, that's motivation. And that's also another piece of resistance that can lurk in the background. And that could also keep you stuck. So inspiration just should feel light and free and exciting. And you're just in that flow. You're just in the moment. So just kind of notice that as you're going about your day, see if you feel kind of like, Bleh, like stuck, like I have to do this, or are you kind of excited and inspired to do it? So that's just another little tip for you in your day to day. I wanted to share another example with you with a client and I call it the battle over money story because I see so many entrepreneurs that are kind of in the same situation here. So I had a client who was super stressed about money because she was seeing more money consistently going out of the business than what she was bringing in. And she was doing lots of marketing, lots of different stuff. And it just really wasn't working to bring in the clients, even though she was even being consistent with it and had been doing a lot of the same marketing for a long time. So. I helped her shift her mindset from the lack of the money coming into the business to new clients coming into the business. So notice I didn't say more money coming in. We just talked about clients because that's what she ideally wanted. So we didn't change any of her marketing at this time. We didn't touch her approach. She just kept doing the same things that she had been doing this whole time as we were working on the shifting piece. 
And so now she actually has clients that are coming in daily to the business. And anytime she starts to see the lack of clients coming in, she knows that it's her mindset. So I'm not saying that she's still not actively investing in marketing and those things to promote her business. She's still doing that, but she knows that it's that mindset piece now that's really that underlying condition that's making the marketing work. So can you see what I mean when I say that your mindset is really the engine that drives your marketing to work? Okay, so I think maybe we've all felt like the lady in this picture, right? So there's frustration, a little bit of frustration there. I wanted to talk about, we're going to shift things just a little bit because this is something that I see happen a lot in businesses and I don't think it's talked about enough. So why do so many businesses fail even when they pay for help? So a lot of people think they're failing because they've never reached out, they've never invested in advice or expertise for their business. Honestly, for a lot of business owners, that's not true. So that's why I wanted to address this because this has a lot to do with what we're talking about now. So a lot of people, again, they have a problem. They hire maybe a consultant, maybe they hire some kind of agency to help them, or maybe they even invest in maybe like an online course. I know a lot of people I work with have um, done that, but whatever it is for you, you've somehow invested some time, maybe even some time in your business, right? It doesn't even have to be about money. It's just that maybe you've invested in a mentor or something who's been working with you and things are just not working out. So is that something that maybe you can relate to, or maybe you know somebody that that's happened to? Well, I mean, I'll be the first to say sometimes it's bad advice, right? I mean, anybody that has an opinion can give bad advice, but what I found is even more to be true is that much of the help and advice out there doesn't work because the consultants or the programs or the agencies that are giving the advice, they don't address the underlying issues of mindset. And I don't know why that is. I think some of it is they don't anticipate or maybe they don't really even understand the mindset piece. But what they don't know is that their students or their clients will need mindset support to overcome that inner stuff that's just going to come up because that's what happens when we, as humans, we go to implement something that's new or something that we've never tried before, right? That's, that's just natural for us to have that happen. So I want to share another story with you about where I've seen this happen. So I call this the $10,000 um, consultant story because this is what happened to one of my clients. So she went out and she invested a huge amount of money to get her business going. These people were supposedly experts in her field. They had everything for her and she was really excited, scared to spend that much money on growing her business, but she took the leap and at first she was happy to do it. But after she started working with this consultative agency, the company told her a bunch of stuff to do to change and to grow, you know, be able to grow her business. But the problem was that the advice that they gave her, it did not feel good. It did not feel good to her at all. And like we've been talking about, if something doesn't feel good, what happens, right? The strategy sits on the desk. There's not much that's done. It's just they're collecting dust. So they also gave her a lot of homework. And as she was trying to implement this homework, she felt super uncomfortable uh, with it. It just it felt out of alignment with her values. Now, I'm not saying that the advice was out of integrity or anything. I don't mean that, but it just really wasn't what she had envisioned for her business. They were just telling her to do a lot of stuff that she just really didn't see where that was going to head her in the direction that she wanted to go. So I was working with her simultaneously as she was in this 12 month contract with this consulting agency. And so I worked with her to remove her fear, her doubt, and her worry and just the other stuff that was coming up as she was trying to implement this homework and, and take this advice in. And so we shifted her paradigm a little bit so that she felt good about what they were asking her to do. And we kind of tweaked some of the strategies just a little bit, just to better fit her mission and that made her feel better. So 
By the end of the 12 months with her contract with them, she was able to benefit as much as she possibly could by the advice that they had given her. And she felt a lot better about the investment that she had made that quite honestly, she couldn't get out of. So she had to fulfill um, the annual contract, but it ended up being a pretty good thing for her, at least the best that could be six, um, you know, expected. So I'm bringing this up because I see this happen a lot. I've seen a lot of people spend a lot of money on things that they really never even implement at all. And, and I feel like this is why. So I just wanted to bring this up because I hate to see so many entrepreneurs and business people basically collect a library of information that's not really helping them grow their business, right? So we don't want that. So why our mindset fails us. I just want to recap on this one last time, because when an entrepreneur pays for help, is failure always due to the bad advice? Well, you know, or is it because the entrepreneur doesn't do anything with the training sometimes? But is it because they don't listen to their consultant? I mean, that can happen too, but typically it's not the reason. It's not the reason for the failure. It's the, the lack of results is due to the entrepreneur's mindset. And I would say that that is the case at least eight times, if not more out of 10. So let's go one deeper level on this before we move on. So what exactly do I mean by mindset in this situation? Well, I kind of touched on this just a minute ago, but when we get new advice, our brains try to protect us. That That is what our brain, or at least part of our brain, thinks that it's designed to do. So how does your brain do that? Well, that's when it evokes fear, doubt, worry, or any of those alarm bells that you sense going off when you try to do something new. It's just, we're just wired that way. So these are the things that keep you stuck. And that's why you stay perpetuating in that old, that same old problem, like nothing changes. Because until you shift out of those paradigms, the outward problem is never going to actually change. So I had mentioned this earlier with that last client too, is another reason this happens is that when you get advice, it's out of alignment sometimes, meaning it just doesn't resonate with you. It just doesn't feel good with you and your mission and what you're trying to do. So that's another reason that a lot of people don't act when they pay for training or advice. So, you know, as you know, you don't get results until you implement new things into your business. So that's why I added mind support to my business is because I just saw through the marketing and sales strategy pieces, so many people were failing and failing at other programs as well. And I just knew that I had to change that and shift that so I could get people on the road to success. So transforming your business really starts with transforming your thinking. So what I want you to do, we're, we're getting to a close here, but what I want you to do going forward is think about being what I call a mindset detective. And what I mean by that is I want you to start noticing things in your mindset and what you're thinking and what you're feeling. So I wanted to give you some advice on some things that might come up for you that you can recognize when you are stuck and you're hitting that wall, you're coming up against that wall. So the first thing that I see with a lot of people is not implementing new ideas. So we've talked about that a little bit today. So maybe you're investing in someone or something to help you grow your business. And again, that doesn't have to be money. That could be that you're spending time with someone who's giving you that expert advice. But for whatever reason, you recognize that you're leaving that session or you're leaving that training with the best of intentions, but you're really not implementing all of the steps to hit your goals. So the second clue is that you're going to notice angst of some sort when you go to do something. So we talked about that just a minute ago, whether that's doubt, fear, uh, worry. Uh, I see a lot of people that are overwhelmed. All that stuff is coming up to stop you from reaching your goals. So notice when that starts to creep in stress. I had that in my notes. Stress is another one. That's just really kind of a mindset block. But that's an indicator that you're stuck 
in that situation. And the third and final thing that I wanted to share with you is that if every week is the same, and what I mean by that is if you look back to maybe the last four Mondays in your business, and every single Monday looks the exact same and there's no progress, if you've seen that movie Groundhog Day where the guy keeps getting up and like every day is the same, like he's reliving it day in and day out, that's another indicator that you are stuck in your business. Oh, and I wanted to um, say one more thing about that too, is if every day is the same in your business, that doesn't mean that you're not working hard. That's what I also see with business professionals and entrepreneurs is not only is every day or every week the same, they are working nonstop in their business. They are not sitting around doing nothing. They are working so hard, but nothing's changing. So if any of those things are coming up for you right now, or you can recognize those in your business, those are some really big clues that mindset might be something to look at and working in your business. So before we officially close out, I would just want to recap on some things, right? Okay. So, and we're going to go to Q&A here in just a minute. So really there's a twofold approach to growing your business. So part one is creating that physical in the world, those operational plans, those marketing strategies to grow your business. And basically what that boils down to is what is your daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, and annual goals, and what are you doing? This is like your doing plan. So obviously that's the first piece and what most people tend to focus on. But part two, like we talked about today, is unlocking these mental handcuffs that you may have on your mindset and that stuff when it shows up. So really success, if we really had to give it a definition, is about staying the course on your plan. So you've got to have a plan, you've got to know the steps to take to get you to your goal, but you also got to remove these roadblocks that come up as you start to implement that plan. So what I see this look like with clients that I've worked with, it's like a two-step dance. So we take one step forward by implementing something new in their business, possibly related to that, that big plan to get to the goal. So as they start to take action, that's when you're going to start to feel and recognize that inner stuff within you coming up. Because like I said, part of that brain wants to keep you safe. So that's when you're going to be triggered. So as that happens, then you've got to remove those mental and emotional barriers that are stopping you from taking the next step in your business. So that's why I kind of call it a two-step. It's really a two-phase plan. So what is your path? to your pot of gold, right? So looking at this picture, can you imagine that that pot of gold is somewhere out there at the end of that rainbow? Your pot of gold is out there waiting for you. So I wanted to leave you with a few gold nuggets in your pot of gold. So here's three of them for today, if you take nothing else away. Number one, your mindset determines your success or failure in your life and in your business, right? Your mindset determines your success. Number two, releasing your mindset break gets you more clients, sales, and cash flow. That's what this is really all about. It's the mindset stuff. And third, your lack of results from other programs or investments in help is not your fault. I really want to emphasize that because a lot of people beat themselves up that they've tried this and tried that and they've invested this and invested that and they're just scared to try something else because it's failed so many times before. But it's not your fault because it's the mindset stuff that most people don't address. So I wanted to leave you with this picture. I love this picture. This guy is so empowered that he is ready to do anything. So this is your bonus takeaway nugget for today. You are now empowered to create success on your terms. And very few entrepreneurs and business professionals know what you know today. We have gone over some very, very powerful stuff that if you continue to work on some of these things that you learned today, I have no idea where you'll be 12 months from now, but I guarantee you, you will be reaching goals that you probably never even thought that you could reach. And so it's all about your mindset. 
So I want to thank you for your time today. I, I've loved being here and I appreciate so much that you've come to join me and the Small Business Development Center on working to grow your business. Just briefly before I move on, I'm going to show you some more resources, but if you'd like a free resource from me, I do have a little assessment that you can take, and this will show you five hidden mistakes. We've talked about some of them today, but this will show you five hidden mistakes that I find are sabotaging the growth of most people's business. So this assessment will take you between 10, maybe 15 minutes to complete, and you will have so much clarity on the next thing to do to grow your business. And also, if you're not aware, you have a ton of resources at your fingertips with the North Texas Business Development Center. So they provide no cost, confidential and customized business advising for you, and they are here to support you. So here is their contact information, and please do not hesitate to reach out, even if you're not sure whether they have resources for you, please ask. There are so many things that they provide, and I have found that many entrepreneurs and small business owners don't even know what they've got available at their fingertips. So thank okay. you again, and I am ready for questions, if anyone has questions. Oh, wow, Jamie. Uh... Let me put my video back on. Uh, thank you for all of that. We have been through some, uh, we at the SBDC, uh, North Central Texas SBDC, have been through some training about um, visualization and meditation. And, and uh, I find that that actually does work once we have uh, the right um, meditation technique, as well as the right affirmation to work uh, for us. It, it just really works wonders. Uh, one question, let's see, uh, Brett says, fear is real and you should, and you said that doing new things can make it difficult to overcome and try your best to move forward. Uh, like your brain is keeping you safe. What can we do to make it easier to really adapt our thinking and make it a positive opportunity once we realize this is happening? It's, it's like, oh, instead of you're frozen and then you went, okay, I'm frozen. Now, what do I do to get away from this? Yeah. yeah. So one of the things that I teach my clients right away is to observe it. So Let's say that you're getting ready to implement a new project and when you go to do it, that fear comes up. If you can kind of step back a little bit and kind of look at it as a third party observer and just separate yourself from that fear for just a moment and go, you know what? There's some fear here. I'm going to recognize you fear. I'm going to take a moment to observe you. A lot of times that in and of itself will help dissolve it. So that's kind of the first step is just becoming aware. Most people kind of bang around in their day to day, really unaware of what they're thinking. So that's another thing that I work with clients who are new is I put them on a little program to write down like three to five thoughts a day. And it's really not so much about the thought. I mean, it is like when we get into the deeper work, but it's really just getting them into that practice of noticing what they're thinking, because we kind of just get on automatic pilot. And so that's part of the problem is most people don't even recognize what they're thinking. And so they're just every day. It's like, it's like that groundhog thing. So just looking at your fear and just realizing that it's really kind of an illusion and it's not, it's not this big thing that you think it is, is one way to just really dissolve it. Mm -hmm. Okay, Brett, are you saying something? No, okay. <laughs> He's giving us the thumbs up. Yeah, okay, you answered his question. Um, okay, it, it's kind of like writing, just an observation from my part, kind of like writing down in a food journal, 
-hmm. whenever you're uh, dieting or something to actually write it down and see it, then you can go, wow, I didn't realize I was eating that many calories in one day. Exactly. Or, or did I eat all of that? And it just kind of brings it to the forefront, I guess. Yes. Yeah. yeah so it's just the first step is recognizing. Um, here's the other thing I'll say is once you get into this work, I don't know if there's ever an end to it. <laughs> it's kind of just like um, you can't work out once and then you're fit. It's kind of just a, it's a piece of lifestyle. I, I spend a lot of time on my mindset, mm -hmm. a lot of time, but I will tell you this too, um, just kind of related to this. What is so amazing about this work when you start to do it is you become so much stronger that when unexpected things happen, you're able to deal with them. You know, a lot of people just get into these almost like meltdown stages or, the stress just goes from zero to 10 when something is not working, especially in our businesses, right? Because we are like the creator. We're trailblazing every day, not just once in a while, every day. And like the unexpected is going to come up all the time. Mm -hmm. um, computers aren't going to work or um, maybe a client decides to reschedule or, you know, just stuff is just constantly happening that are, is unexpected. And the stronger that your mindset is, the easier that you can just kind of go with the flow and it not really upset the apple cart. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the biggest benefits that I see just in general after you start really working on your mind. Um, let's see. And Nosa, Nosa says, in regards to mindset and manifestation, how would you advise partners who have a different mindset? One who acts fast and the other is an overthinker. I don't know if that's a business or a personal question, but um, I think a lot of it is just playing off each other's strengths. Like self-awareness is to me, one of the most powerful things that you can have. We're not going to be perfect at everything. But we can decide, you know, what are we good at? And, and I'm saying this from a business perspective, is if this is a business partner question is really sit down together and say, you know, where where do I excel? What do I love to do? Where am I good? And and then say the same thing with your partner and then decide what aspects of your business each of you should handle. Because it's not about good or bad. It's about maximizing. And, and getting the best of everything. So if you've got someone who's slower and likes to ponder things, well, maybe they should handle the deep details of the business. If you've got someone who's really fast paced and they can make decisions on the fly and, you know, maybe they're the ones that are working outwardly with the clients and making, you know, and, and being able to um, work deals. Like in, in my business sometimes, for instance, I end up doing a lot of negotiating work um, with potential clients. So someone who's maybe likes to think about things that might be really out of their comfort zone thinking, oh my gosh, you know, I have to put a proposal together and what if the client wants something different and we have to negotiate terms and prices? Well, maybe that person that likes to think quickly and, and, and loves for constant change, maybe that's their, their forte in the business. So I don't know if I answered this. Is there any follow up questions to that? But that would be my advice. So, so basically, uh, play to play to the individual strengths. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you are an overthinker, then maybe you should go back here and work on on the projects and and be more detailed. And if you're uh, outgoing and a go getter, then maybe you should be dealing face to face with customers or clients. Yeah, so kind of okay. taking, I guess, just another thought I had, kind of taking this presentation to the next level, part of it, yes, is eliminating the mindset break. So when your inner stuff comes up and it's stopping you from taking action, we absolutely need to eliminate that as much as possible, but we're all designed with specific gifts and talents, and even if you were to take the break off things, there's probably some things in your business that you shouldn't be working on. That's another uh, thing that I see with 
clients is they're trying to do like every aspect of their business. They're trying to be the accountant and they're trying to be the marketer and they're trying to be, you know, whatever their business is, they're trying to be the expert and, and actually do the work and billing and all this other stuff. And it's like, no, like, what are you designed to do? Like, where, where is your sweet spot? Like, what is your genius zone? And when you can work in your genius zone, that is the next step. And transformation. So that's kind of parlays into that whole business partner piece is, yeah, maybe you can, maybe you can run QuickBooks, but is that your forte? Because maybe if words are your forte, you should be doing the writing in the business and let somebody else do the numbers. So just finding out like, where, where do you fit? What's the genius zone? Yeah. And if you have a, a job that uh, you are not really fitted to, it uh it can be tragic actually <laughs> so well and it's a performance issue um uh, as a matter of fact that helped happened to me in the last corporate job i had before i went into my own business they hired me to basically market and grow their business and just through a various of company shifts i was having to do a lot of admin work and it's not that i couldn't do that work but I felt like they weren't really getting their best ROI out of me because I could go out and grow the business. And instead I was doing all this behind the scenes stuff, which was bogging me down from the work that they really had hired me to do. So that's kind of something else to think about in the business. Just because you can do it doesn't mean you should. <laughs> True. True. <laughs> so. Well, Jamie, thank you so much. Um, we really appreciate your time and uh, the wisdom that you share with us. Um, I want to thank everyone for joining us. And uh, just to remind you, we do use a survey. So you'll be receiving a survey uh, after the webinar. And please share your opinions. Give us your thoughts and your suggestions. We're always looking for ways to better uh, provide the information that you need to better serve our, our clients. Um, we have some upcoming webinars. We have another one this afternoon. So if you've got a free afternoon, we'd love for you to join us too. Uh, this afternoon, we have Lorna Kibbe talking about presentations. Who doesn't need or want to have uh, better presentation skills? Tips for being effective and calm. And then next week, Mark Wilson, our retail expert, has developed something called co-opetition. Uh, join us to find out what his new word means. And Jamie comes back for naming, niching, and branding. And again, Lorna Kibbe, uh, meetings, how to make them short, sweet, and effective. Everyone needs that. Then Jamie will join us after the holidays, the five steps to set your business on fire. Uh, you can always go to our website www.sbdc.nctc.edu and there you can register for those webinars. You can get contact information or you can schedule an appointment with an advisor and look for the resources that we have for you on the website. I want to thank our benefactors, the Small Business Administration, the State of Texas, North Texas SBDC Regional Office, and North Central Texas College. We are grant funded and they help us to be able to support businesses. Thank you so much for joining us today and I look forward to seeing you this afternoon for uh, Lorna Kibbe. And I'm gonna go ahead and end the webinar. Thank you all for joining. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.